Hey all, and welcome to this video. Uh, this is a Q&A response video to some of my live trainings. I'll put a link to the space admin training this refers to somewhere up here for you. Uh, but these are the questions that came up during some of the space admin trainings for Confluence. For this example, we'll be using Confluence Cloud. It will be very similar if you happen to be on Data Center. These questions may also have been answered in that live session, but I pulled them out to explicitly answer them here. Please use the chapters to skip around if you only want a specific question and drop any comments you have with other content you want to see. So let's dig in and see what these questions are. First up, is there a limit to the number of spaces you can have? I have never seen an upper limit. Uh, there might be one just in the thousands or a really big number that won't really matter in day-to-day -day use, but there is no hard cap on the number of spaces you could have in your instance of Confluence. Now that said, you probably don't want to have tons and tons of spaces. You want to sit down and think through what is your strategy? How will you create a new space? Is it by team? Is it by project or department or something else? Because this will help focus where your content goes and make it a better experience for your users. Having a smaller number of spaces also makes things a lot easier to manage. I'm going to pop over to Confluence and just show you where you can see all of your spaces and then you'll kind of see why you don't want too many. Here we have my demo instance. Uh, and up at the top, there is a Spaces menu. So this is available to everyone. I'm just going to open that up. And at the bottom, there's View All Spaces. Now, this will let me see any space that I have the view permission for. So it's possible there are more spaces that are just hidden. And we'll see this list. And it's showing me, right off the bat, a list of a lot of personal spaces. I know they're personal because it's the person's name instead of something like Clients Portal, which is probably something specific to clients. Now I can do things like watch them if there's changes, star them, I have some more actions, I can see the space settings which I'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but as you can see there's a lot of spaces in here. Now this is a very small demo instance but imagine if there were hundreds of these. Hopefully they're named well so you can find things and hopefully they're categorized so you can sort but you really want to make this number as small as needed just so folks can easily find stuff. So again there's no upper limit but in reality you probably don't want to have too many. Okay, to our next question. Can you restrict specific types of comments? Um, this is a great question. Uh, I'll pop into Confluence and show you where you can restrict comments and then the different types of comments. Short answer, you cannot. If I restrict in a space the ability for someone to use comments, they can't use any comments. So here on a page, I can leave a comment by selecting text and clicking comment. I could even select an entire block of text Sometimes when you mouse over these, you'll see a comment icon. Or on the bottom of a page, you can comment on the overall page. So way down at the bottom, there's a comment section. But the permission to add a comment is tied to all three of those. So as a space admin, if I go into my settings, and then I look for users or groups under space permissions, I'm going to look for the comments section. And that's right here. If I don't have the add comments, I won't be able to use any type of comment inline or on the page. Typically, I see folks allowing comments in most places. It's very helpful because it lets you flag things that might be concerning or out of date. Um, sometimes I do see the delete comment permission restricted a bit, so folks just don't go through and delete other people's comments. Uh, but I can either allow you to do them or not. I can't say only allow inline. Okay. Let's pop on over and see what our next question is. Can you change the space key? No, we can't. When a space is created, Confluence will assign it a key, usually a few letters, and Confluence will guess. You can also make up one. And that key is then associated with everything in that space, every page, every blog, everything has it. But once it's set, we can't change it. There are some interesting caveats. For example, if I migrate from one copy of Confluence to another, I might be able to export the space and re-import it, but that's making a new space with a different key. So that's not changing an existing space key. We're going to go back to Confluence and I'll show you where that key pops up. If I go back to my space settings and I go to space details under manage space, I'll get some high level information about the space. Here I have the name, and right under that I have this field key, which is a long string, a unique identifier. If I go to another space, uh, this one, I should see a different space key. Either way, I can't change it though, it's locked. The technical term, which is fun, is it is immutable. 
Mutable things can be changed. Immutable things are locked in to the system. So under Space Details, I'll see this key is RH. And if I go to Edit Space Details, I won't be able to change it. I can change the name or the description or the status, but I can't change the space key. All right, let's see what's next. Can we default permissions for new users? This is a great question. As new folks join an organization or join a Confluence instance, you might want to ensure that they have access to a certain set of spaces or the ability to do specific things. For example, maybe they can add content on their own pages and always delete them. There are a few ways to do this. Um, it does require what's called a group though. So I'm gonna go back into Confluence and we'll, I think one of our future questions is more about groups. But if I go back to my space settings and look under uh, space permissions, I can assign it to specific users and this wouldn't let me default because I'd have to add someone to it. But if I go to groups, I can have groups of people. For example, I might have a group just called Confluence Users and every time someone is hired, people are added to that group. I can then put that group under group permissions in every space or in areas that I want or even copy the permissions in from a different space that include that. This is the short, quickest way we can get to that defaulting permissions though. As a new hire joins or someone is provisioned, adding them to the group will then have the permissions go to everywhere that group exists. So let's see if our next question is about groups and we'll dig more into that. How are groups created? This is a great question. Uh, unfortunately, as unless you are a Confluence instance administrator, so the layer above a space, you can't create groups. Groups can be created by an instance admin. They can go in and make a new one. They can add or remove people. Once they're created, I as a space admin can use them. So if we go back into Confluence, we'll see that there's groups under the groups tab of permissions. And I can edit these and then treat them like a single user but it will apply the permissions to everyone in that group. So my instance admin can create them. And typically, if I want to change it, I'll have to file something like an IT ticket or talk to that person. I tend to review those groups on a monthly or quarterly basis to make sure the right people are in them. For example, my HR group should only have people in HR. So I'll go through and double check. The other way groups can be created is through an integration to something like Okta or Active Directory or other identity manager. This is something typically your information technology or IT team would set up, but that could automatically say, if someone has a certain job, add them to Atlassian add-ons admin. Or if someone is hired, add them into the Confluence users group to make sure they're automatically provisioned. Another permissions related question, can permissions be applied to everyone? Yes and no. Um, as I've mentioned, you can have a group just called Confluence users, and as new people are added, that gets added. So a new hire would be added to the Confluence users group and then they get permissions. There you go. So one approach is to think through your structure of spaces and figure out which spaces everyone should be able to view and maybe comment in and make that your Confluence users group and put people in there. And then as you need to have more specific groups, engineering managers can add pages to engineering or HR administrators can modify policies, things like that. So you can apply permissions to groups of people, but first you have to create the group. And again, that requires your instance administrator to help out. Here's a great question about what happens to content after someone leaves an organization. Uh, when someone leaves, their content is preserved. It's not gonna delete or hide or archive or get rid of their stuff. And the way to tell if someone's account has been deactivated is to go to a page they might've created and look for the owned by area. That's right up at the top of the page. When you create something in Confluence, you are by default the owner. Now, if Robert Heen leaves, this page would still be owned by Robert Heen, but we'd have a parenthesis and it would say inactive or deactivated right after it. That's a signal that this account is no longer available. Typically, we wanna make sure we're updating or changing the owner of things because the owner is typically the person that someone's gonna to go to with questions about the content. I get a lot of messages about pages I am the owner of, but don't necessarily know the most about. So I always try to change the owner. Space admins can do this and the current owner can always reassign it. But if the owner leaves, the content will still exist. It won't get wiped out. And here's our last question, but how do we figure out who a space's admins are? This one is actually pretty straightforward. We're gonna go back into Confluence and in any space, we should still see the space settings menu. 
So as a space admin, I of course see this and I have a lot of stuff in it. But even if I'm not a space admin, I'll still have the space details under manage space right here. And if I open that up, that will give me a list of everyone who has the space admin permission. We'll see a big long list here right at the bottom called administrators. And each of these individuals is a space administrator for the space I'm looking at. So if I need help, I could go to any one of these people. Now you will notice some of these are names for integrations, Microsoft Teams for Confluence Cloud, but a lot of these are other individuals who I might work with. So if I'm confused or need help in a space, the first place I go is space settings, space details, and then I just find an administrator and I start asking them questions. Can you help get me access? Where do I go to for help? All right, that was all of our questions from the recent space admins training. I'll encourage you to check out the recorded live sessions. Again, there should be a link somewhere up here for you. Please use the comments to ask your questions and be on the lookout for more content coming. I really appreciate everyone's questions and making time to sit in on these trainings. I have a lot of fun with them and I hope you get something out of them. So thanks again, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one of these soon.